I'm sorry. That's Lottie. Salty and Chip. Uh, Slipknot, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I love? What? <laughs> it's when people go, oh my gosh, Slipknot again. Or they'll say, Metallica again. <laughs> say it again. We have a main stage show in which mainstream bands get played. And then we have an underground show. Which underground bands get played? Mm -hmm. And we're the determiner of what lands on main stage and what lands well, on actually, underground. Actually, you guys are because what was there? There's well, a yeah. It's you guys' like reaction. We had Event Seven. We had Event Sevenfold, for example. Yep. That initially started as a main stage band, but then got demoted because they didn't have enough people asking for it. Right. weren't so, active enough. They weren't active enough. We initially had Black Sabbath as an underground band, which then got quickly graduated to a main stage yep. band. So it all depends on how many times you guys ask for it. Slipknot gets asked for a ton. And how many views the video gets, And we're too. Yeah, we're not going to say, oh, uh, a bunch of people are asking for Slipknot, but we're not going to do that right. because... Uh, fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> Joe Schmo that doesn't have a YouTube channel at all. That has some obscure band. <laughs> we'll do his instead. Yeah. Likes the uh, the paint drying. Uh, no, we do though. We yeah, do whatever. even small stuff that that's not going to get. Well, a lot the funny of thing is, we put Amber Skies on on the main stage and people. Yeah, are everybody's mad at us. People. <laughs> <laughs> so long story short, all the complaints are about are are people they're upset because that band's not getting played. I don't know what to tell you. Me neither. <laughs> But I do if know you what decide to, to start a channel, send us a link. <laughs> yeah, I always say, like, please guide me to the link to your YouTube yep. channel. <laughs> We're putting out 14 shows a week. I know. And a half hour it. clip, ladies whether and gentlemen. Whether we're sick or not. Sick or not. Whether we're tired. Toothache. On vacation. Vacation. Doesn't matter. Hotel room. You guys come first. You miserable brats. <laughs> you're ungrateful ass. This is Slipknot. <laughs> we might do a whole fucking week of Slipknot yep. back to back. Yeah. What the fuck are you going to do about it? You know Slip what? Not. And we know for sure Metal Elitist is going to be there watching. So. Right. Shout out to the big homie. <laughs> the Underground Metal Elitist. Hit that in your YouTube. That's the big homie. Yep. All right. Let's go. Dead Memories. Slipknot. All go. hope is gone.
<sighs> it's interesting. Interesting. What'd you think? Well, I think that it's a true, very true song. What do you mean by true? True as in that you can't you can't survive if you just keep dead memories in your heart. If you're so busy holding on to the past, it's hard to progress into the future. Um, it seems like he loves somebody, like the person really wanted them wanted him to love them, and he did, but that it, things didn't go very well. And um, I think Corey was married and divorced. Yeah, I mean that would make sense. <clears throat> Traded my emotions for a contract to commit. Yikes. You know, some people just like whittle marriage down to just a contract. Yeah. Which I always like the uh, concept of covenant in, in the scripture, but yeah, it seems like that's that's what he that's what he's talking about to some degree. Yeah, and it, it seems like, but then it seems like that. Um, so when I got away, I only kept my scars. See right there? Tied my soul into a knot. You know how they say tie the knot for yep. marriage? Yep. So. And got me to submit. Wow. I mean, marriage is about submission in a sense. You submit to each other. Yeah. You know? So yeah. when I got away, I only kept my scars. The other me is gone. Uh huh. Now I don't know where I belong. Yeah, it's really it's one of the one of the challenging things about relationships, especially marriage, is that you know it says the two become one. Yeah. You know, the man leaves his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two become one flesh. Right. But I think a lot of people struggle with how to do that, how to become one with a person while at the same time maintaining your own <clears throat> maintaining your own sense of self and your own yeah. sense of person. Yeah. You know, because there, there, there's got to be a way to make. Yeah. I, I, I was at a. <laughs> it's funny. I was at a wedding one time, and something crazy happened, and I ended up having to marry these two people. And uh, and it was, it was, uh, good lord. I hated doing it. It was the one only time I'd do it. I remember that. Well, maybe Pony and uh, and Jake. And Jake. But other than that, forget it. <laughs> um, but, but one of their friends at the whole, I guess after at the reception, everybody's like talking or whatever. I forgot the girl's name, but she said something about like, you're still an individual or something like that. Mm -hmm. And this girl was like, not churchy. And she was like fading out of evangelicalism. Like I could tell, I could see the signs. And mm -hmm. at the time I was like, you know, it, but it, but that always struck me. That line always struck me, and I remember like she was, she was saying, you know. So I, I, I thought it was very, very interesting because I think she's right. I think that there has to be, I think there's got to be some sense of like knowing who you are as an actual human being outside of the relationship, while at the same time, there is a special oneness that comes with being married to a person. Yeah, I think too that it's. Um sometimes you end up falling into a role and like being a role rather than a person. Yeah, which is extremely easy to do in evangelicalism. Yeah. Because that's all they talk about. They talk mm -hmm. about the role of the wife or the role of the husband or all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Instead of like talking about um, how to be a person who's a husband or how to be a person who's a wife. It's the role. Yeah. It's true. Okay. <clears throat> and then you, you run into all these situations I think that's part of why I, a lot of times I don't know like who I am in certain situations is because I'm so dictated by roles and so I'm like trying to separate myself from roles and trying to find my own place. And with you, like you're like, fuck the role, you know what I mean? Like you're very much like, whatever, you know? Um, but I don't know, in some ways that makes it a little bit more difficult because I'm like, well... <laughs> Right, with roles or boxes to operate in. Yeah. There's ways to... Yeah. You know what you're supposed to do or you're not supposed to do. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think the Bible gives you that sort of... Those definitional examples of how to be a human. Mm -hmm. Like, the New Testament has certain rules for how to run church, but how to actually do it, there isn't, like, a, a liturgy from start to no, finish. No, there's not. That's why you could have... American evangelicalism and then Eastern Orthodoxy and right. they're both valid expressions of Christianity. Right. It's the same thing with marriage. It's like, 
okay, like, okay, dude, you're the leader, lead like Christ leads, you, you're the, you're, you're, you're the, you're the first in command, you know, put yourself under the authority and you guys go march in one direction and, but that's it, it's not like, in this situation, do this, in that situation, mm -hmm. do that. And so what happens is, is that you have all these like books that get written about like how to fill in those blanks because it's like God didn't think that through. Like he didn't tell us that and it's right. like maybe he didn't he didn't want to do maybe that. Maybe he, he wanted to give us a couple <laughs> principles. He didn't do that. Yeah. Give us a couple principles and then let us as human beings like mm -hmm. figure out the rest per yeah. relationship, you know? Yeah, because every relationship is different and should be because everybody's unique, you know? Right. Right. So but then evangelicals come in and like they, they like construct this entire yeah. mindset. There's endless amounts of um, variation within couples. Right. And then you're trying to box them into one box. Well, <laughs> the uniqueness is lost if if you box them like that. But it's a, I feel like you feel a lot safer in the in that situation than mm, like I this, do. where it's like Duh. I do, yeah. 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 But there's like I know what I can attain to, you know what I mean? And I know if I hit it by the end of the day. But like this, I'm just kind of like, well, what did you want anyway from me today? Like, did you want anything? Like, do you need anything? <laughs> like, you didn't, you didn't express any needs today, so like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So then I can't be like, I did a damn good job today. Well, what I'm trying to avoid for you and for our daughters is like, this whole not knowing who you are outside of the relationship. Yeah. I think that that's extremely dangerous. You know, when he was saying something about like the other me is dead. Yeah. Because there's there's a lot of times I see it over and over again where you have to like sacrifice so many parts of your. And I think now I don't know where I belong. Right. And I think in every authentic relationship, sacrifice is going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like I don't want to swing the other way and say you should never sacrifice. Well, that's bullshit. Of course you should. Mm -hmm. There's no relationship that you have that doesn't come with some form of sacrifice. So it's like. I get that, but I'm like, the core of who you are as an individual person, <clears throat> where he says the other me is dead, I just feel like if the relationship requires you to do that, I think you need to reset. You got to do a reset of the relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to leave the relationship. I just think you need to reset the relationship. Right. And you, you, you got to figure out because you can't have, you can't, like, you're not supposed to kill yourself to become one with the other person. Right. Right, and it's not, and, and it's in, it's like you don't cut half of yourself, and then the other one cuts half, so then now you're a full whole. It's two whole people creating a, another whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's extremely difficult, like the 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 way to manage that, because most people like fall on one side or the other. You have like radical individualists in relationships, and they're like, I don't care about that, and yeah. believe they shouldn't have to sacrifice anything. But then you have all these radical co collectivists who are like oh no everything has to and then I remember we were talking to somebody and they were like and we were like you gotta figure out how to relate to Sori as a person outside of oh right yeah and couldn't do it right <laughs> um, so then you end up in this situation where I think the relationship was over we were never alive and we won't be born again I think he's talking about their relationship like what he said but we, he said we were never alive right so from the very beginning, it was just about commitment and not about... Right, not about like the life and the passion, which I think is probably hyperbolic. Really? Yeah, I don't believe... I, I think anytime a relationship ends, all the never and always stuff comes well, out. Well, yeah, possibly, but I don't know if like, you know, maybe the passion was before they tied the knot, you know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe things had gone on and then they were like, well, we should just get married <clears> now. And so then it was about commitment at that point, not about... You know, maybe they got pregnant or I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, sometimes people feel like, oh, we got pregnant. So now we have to get married. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's possible. That's very possible. Um, but I think that, you know. I just think that's hyperbolic when he says yeah, I mean, it's yeah, never alive. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like once the relationship ends, people say... He it always was always this. like this and blah, blah, blah. They like, never did this. What memories do you have in your heart then if you were never alive? The whole thing was just a dead relationship. Right. Why are you struggling with memories in your heart then if it, if it didn't mean anything? Right. That doesn't make sense to me. But like people tend to do that when relationships end. It's because so. it hurts and it's easier if you just demonize the whole thing and then, then you can move past it easier. 
because, or you think that you're moving past it easier with less pain. Yeah, I found that people who like speak hyperbolically like that aren't aren't doing a very good job at moving past it. I, the people who say we had a good time, I loved him, I loved her, that time is over now, like, and have a better have a better shot at actually achieving closure that's healthy. Mm -hmm. I feel like the people that are just like, ah, oh, make all these crazy statements like. Mm -hmm all these hyperbolic claims like those those ones I don't think do very well mm -hmm. like it seems to me that they're just you know because it's a form of denial how do you have dead memories in your heart then mm -hmm. like, I, don't, I don't understand that and he says dead visions in your name dead fingers in my veins right so that means he still feels her right 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 she's yeah she's still in his blood obviously yeah Obviously. And then he wrote a song about her. Right. <laughs> so, right. So, I mean... Sad. I mean, you know... This song to me, though, was like... Eh, just low energy, not like the Slipknot that I'm like used to. There was not oh, a lot of... Oh, no, like, it wasn't like the Slipknot I'm used to either, but I liked it because... I mean, the topic is... The topic is sad, you know? And it's hard and... You know... Even now I realize the time I'll never get. Meaning the time you'll never get back because you spent all this time in a relationship with a person you didn't really love? Yes. <clears throat> that is true though. Like we had that conversation, like there there are certain situations or certain relationships I wouldn't have been in if there weren't external factors. Mm -hmm. You know, and like a lot of it is a waste of, a lot of it is like wasted time. You gotta think to yourself, like before you go into a relationship, why you're in the relationship? Mm. You know, because if it's if it's for if anything, it's to spite somebody else, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> or to rebel against somebody else. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's for if it's for any other motivation, but rather that you know, aside from that, how you are with that person, like you know, your chemistry with that person, your love for that person, and you know, what sort of life you guys want to create together. I mean. The other me is dead. I hear the voice inside my head. Good lord. Yeah, this just felt like a, just a low energy effort to me. I guess the, you lyrically should, and vocally and everything. If you're gonna get that. in a relationship with somebody, you shouldn't get into the relationship. It should be about you and that person. So you know, I know people that that got married because their parents said it was a good choice, um, but they didn't really think that it was a good choice. And turns out, I, I don't know, like you know, they have difficult times and stuff. So I guess everybody has difficult times, but. Um, I think that they knew more what they were looking for and you know, I think that the, the parents made choices or the mom made choices because of her own fears and her own insecurities and then she projected those onto her children and you know, it just really depends. Like I think that there's times where parents can help pick a, a spouse, you know, if the, if the parents are lo really looking out for your best, you know what I mean? But not if, I don't know, it's so interesting the role of parents because in some, in some cultures they pick the spouse and it's good choices, you know? And then there's times where a parent gets involved in it. <laughs> it well, pulls you in a direction you wouldn't have gone in. Yeah, I, I don't... Yeah. I think it depends, you know. Your your parents, it depends on the nature of the relationship. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, but as far as, like, the song goes... You didn't... You was seeing the, the, the guitars were forgettable. The vocals were forgettable. The whole thing was just like, I, it just, blah, just a I big like mass it. of gray blur to me. But that's how he feels. It was just I low, think. yeah, it's just low energy. Yeah. I just felt like it was, uh, I just felt like they cobbled a bunch of stuff together and uh, let's make a song. Yeah, I think that he was <clears> depressed <throat> and it was a hard topic and that. When is a rock star not depressed? No, the topic itself just kind of like, you know, dead memories and the thoughts and the way that he feels. And I think that, I think that he put that out in music well. It's a four for me. What the heck? It's a nine for me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Terrible. And I think it's an important topic. I think it's an important topic and that's why I got a four. <laughs> because they took such an important topic and put it in a low energy effort. Four minute song that I'll never listen to again for the rest of my days. I won't listen to it because it's sad. Literally, if I review this video again, which I review all our videos, I'm gonna fast forward through the, the song. song. It's that bad. <laughs>
It's a terrible song. Okay, all right. Terrible, terrible song. I hope they don't do this live. If I ever take you to a Slipknot show. You're gonna if they do this live, I'll go get popcorn or something. Cross your arms? No, I, I won't even be in the in the <laughs> arena. I'll go get a popcorn. Then you'll come back. It's that, that bad. Stolen. It's that bad of a song. It's a terrible song. We're sorry. Terrible. I it's actually it. a three like now. Song. Song's what actually a three. Well, let's end this because I don't want you to keep putting it down. I feel okay. like that's right. I think the longer I talk about this song, okay, the, the lower uh, it will go. Let's vent out. What do you got? I already gave it a nine. Nine. That's terrible. It's, it's, a it's a two for me. This is a two. Vent out. Look at that, two. <laughs> That's two fingers. Sorry, Vin Al. out. Gone. Look at that. Messed up the outro. Oh my gosh. God almighty. Terrible.